So genetics, okay. The thing to really understand is this, it's, it's actually kind of funny, but like if you're walking and you're noticing like a mother and a father, a mother and a son, or um, a father and a son, or a mother and a daughter. It's interesting because the mom might be like 55 and the kid might be 18. And if you look, they look like anthropometrically, meaning like their body dimensions, where they hold fat, almost looks identical, you know? And you're like, it's, it's amazing to me because like it's consistent. It's consistent. It basically means that like um, genetics determine in large part, definitely without training, how our bodies look. Um, and they also determine how our bodies respond to exercise and training. There's lots of studies on this. I've done lots of studies on this. Every time we do research, we see people who respond really high to training, people who don't respond at all, people who respond moderately. What I'm gonna say is this. The way to overcome genetics um, is a, a couple of different ways. Number one, you have to understand that you're your own combination. That's the first thing I would say to understand. Okay, so you're your own experiment. If you look at a study, there's the averages in the study, but there's people who didn't respond and people who did respond. Those people who didn't respond doesn't mean they can't respond to training or diet at all. It means that they respond to something different than what the common literature says. So for you, if, you're, if it's not working for you, even though science says it should, you're probably the person who is a non-responder. You need to change it to something else. So you're constantly changing the commentation and you're seeing what you do respond to. I mean, that's the best way that you can do it, I would say. Now, how does that correlate to study designs, et cetera? If you're looking in the literature and something says something and you implement it? And it doesn't work, you need to just realize that you were the person in that study who didn't respond. And you're looking at the average. So try another study. You know, that, try another technique that's from, it's not that all science is bad, it's that that science didn't work for you. And you understand that like, unlike mathematics, you can't prove anything in biological science, right? We can only find patterns and relationships and say, this is what it, the literature seems to suggest, right? So you gotta try a different combination. May not, don't give up. Just realize it's a better combination. A good example like his diet, for example. Some people might never be able to lose weight. Like they keep dieting and dieting and dieting and dieting. And maybe for them, they just don't respond to carbs. And so the whole time they couldn't diet and they were losing weight. And also they try a ketogenic diet and they're losing a bunch of weight. Because for them, genetically, they don't respond well to carbohydrates. Whereas another person might respond great to a higher carbohydrate diet and still be able to lose body fat. Everyone's different. That's why, that's why saying that like a macro is a macro or just calories matter is quite frankly, it's bullshit. You know what I mean? Everyone's different, everyone responds differently and you have a very open mind. What about you personally? Me personally? Me personally, well, um, okay. It's actually cha changed throughout my life throughout my activity and everything like that. Um, for example, myself, <clears throat> I've done different training methods and the best ones where my body responded the best were very high volume, extremely high volume, like training two, three times a day, doing 20, 30, 40 sets a body part, moderate weights. When I went to powerlifting, for example, my body responded by getting stronger. It, my size sucked. My, the density, the, the uh, vascularity of my muscles went away. You know, I was softer. But I was lifting greater than I'd ever lifted. But other people are the opposite of that. Like, they respond really, really good to a powerlifting type of lifestyle, you know? And they don't respond to the high volume. They respond to low volume, less frequency. Everyone's different, and there's studies showing that. Um, and so, so you need to find what you respond best to. The other thing is that changed throughout your life. So for example, for me, I used to actually eat, I never had a high carb tolerance, but for me, I used to train really well on eating like 225 to 250 grams of carbs a day, which as you know, you? me, that's an enormous amount of carbohydrates. It's a week's worth of carbs for so you. It's a week's worth of carbs for me, you know? Um, and, but, but the thing is, at the time I was training three times a day. Now I train once a day and it's not for four hours. So for me now, 
my body defaults to lower carb. I'm not going to be able, if I'm not training three times a day, I'm not going to respond to, you know, 50, uh, 250 grams of carbs. Just no, it doesn't work that way. So I think realize that, and also realize that when you're keeping notes and you're doing your diary, that your responsiveness to training does change on a year by year basis. So you need to find what you responded to, but realize that five years from now, you're like, my notes show that I responded to this. They might not respond when you're older the way they did when you were younger. And I mean just within a five, 10 year period. Part of that is your body's like, I've done that a million times. I'm not gonna adapt anymore to it, even later on. So I think the one thing, the one thing that's constant is, I would say, um, structured change is important. Structured change.